Welcome back to the SNS Grills YouTube channel, everybody. My name is Mike, and today I'm going to show you the easiest prime rib recipe that you have ever seen. This is a super easy cook that anybody can do and achieve outstanding results, and it's coming up right now. Welcome again, everybody. We really appreciate having you here. We have got a ton of great barbecue videos coming up over the next few months, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell to get notifications anytime we release new content. Now let's get into today's super easy prime rib recipe. I have here about an eight pound boneless prime rib. Now prime rib is typically served for special occasions, so when you're out shopping, you really wanna focus on marbling. Take a look at the selection that your store has make sure that whatever you purchase has some nice marbling. Now because this is prime, which is really what you want for this cook, you can see that this is very well marbled. So choose the best one you can find to get the best results for your special occasion. You want this to be tender and juicy and delicious, so choosing a good roast is where that starts. Now I chose boneless because it's easier to carve at the end when you serve, and today it's all about keeping it simple. Now to get to where I am right here, I simply unpackaged this roast, and mine did require a little bit of trimming. I removed the fat cap and removed a lot of the sinew that was here just to clean this up and give us a lot of surface area for our steak seasoning to stick to. There's also a large piece of hard fat on the front side of the roast. Some people will leave that on. I chose to remove it. Now don't sweat the trimming. It's very simple. It just takes a few minutes. All you want to do is give yourself a lot of surface area for your rub to stick to. And speaking of that, it's time to apply the rub now. So as a binder, we're gonna start with a very light coating of olive oil. We're gonna flip it over, get both sides, all surfaces. Now we're simply gonna cover this whole roast, all surfaces, all sides with Montreal steak seasoning, a generous amount. This is gonna help you build a really nice crust and outside texture. As you apply it, just tap it in gently. In case you're wondering, these indentations here are just where the bones are and they were removed. This beauty's ready for the cooker. Now we're gonna be doing this cook out on the SNS kettle today at a temperature range of 225 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. To achieve this temperature, I simply filled the slow and sear with charcoal briquettes, lit one end with a wax cube. I did add a little bit of cherry wood, just a couple pieces for flavor and color. Then I opened the vents wide open and allowed the cooker to come up to temperature. Once you get to within about 75 or 100 degrees of your target temperature, start choking back your vents until you get your temperature dialed in right into that 225, 250. Now where I'm at today, it's about 40 degrees. It's a cooler day. Here's where my top vent is set. And if you have an SNS kettle, you know about the smoke hole. I've closed my lower vent entirely and opened the smoke hole about halfway. This is gonna serve as my lower vent, which is very convenient because I can see exactly how much it's open. These settings are a good starting point for you, although yours might be slightly different. Just keep tuning it in until you get it exactly where you want it. The last thing I'd like to mention is that I did not put any water in the water reservoir of the slow and sear today. This cook is gonna be as easy as it gets. We're simply gonna place this roast on the indirect side of the cooker, monitor the temperatures with a wireless thermometer until we achieve a temperature of 135 degrees Fahrenheit in the center of the roast. Now let's get outside and put this beautiful roast on our kettle. So we just reached our target temperature of 135 degrees Fahrenheit in the center of the roast. This thing looks and smells absolutely incredible. It's time to pull it and get it inside for a short rest. Now how easy was that? All right, we're back inside. We let this roast rest just a few minutes. It's time to carve into it. Now when you're carving into a prime rib, just get yourself something to hold it steady and a nice sharp knife. Typically you want your slices to be about a half inch thick, but that's really up to you. You can cut these in any thickness that you like. Just hold it steady and let the knife do the work. We've got such a beautiful crust on the outside of this thing. Look at that, incredibly juicy. Just take your time and don't sweat it. 
We've got a beautiful smoke ring around the outside. This outside crust is incredible. It doesn't get any easier than this, and look at these results. Okay, so there's really nothing left to do but to give this a taste. Now I did decide to serve this up with a little horseradish sauce. First, we're gonna go without it. Cheers, everybody. Oh my goodness. That's incredible. So for starters, that outside texture is absolutely incredible. I mean, it really, really sets the tone for this entire roast. There's a beautiful smoke ring, beautiful smoke flavor. It's tender, it's juicy, and this recipe is as easy as it gets. Now it's your turn to do this at home. We'll have a link to all the details down in the video description. If you'd like more information on the kettle we used today, you can click right here. I'd like to thank you very much for your time. I appreciate you hanging out with me. Remember, two zones are better than one. And I'll see you on the next video.